Hello, this is one for the record. I am Diana, and today is Saturday, February 11th, 2012. And here is your update for today. Death toll from European deep freeze hits 540. And this is on the extinction protocol. Not much on here. And uh, we'll move on now to SOT.net. Uh, Europe, snow blocks in tens of thousands as death toll rises. Also, ocean current slowdown made Earth spin faster. So I guess it is that it seems like time's going by faster. Because we are spinning a little faster here and there. Uh, also very important, two suns photographed. This morning in Crimea, C-R-I-M-E-A, and that's over by Russia the, and the Ukraine in Russia. So, and it's an excellent picture of two sons. I don't want to have a copyright infringement by showing it. So if you go to SOT.net. If not, I'm, I'm sure I'll end up on uh, YouTube, and I'll put it under my favorites. And also, Ms. Milky the Clown Channel, channel has on there that reactor number two at Fukushima, da, uh, Daiichi or whatever, now at 78 degrees Celsius, two degrees from warning level. Oh, and here we thought it was under cold shutdown. Oh, Tevco believes reactor number two is in a state state of cold shutdown. My goodness, you think? Is it? I don't think so. Parts of spent fuel pool number four. Um. And it's unclear if it has any damage or not. <laughs> no, I guess they're not sure if there's damage over there. Um, spent fuel pool number four. Okay, moving on. Thousands march against nuclear power in Japan. Hmm. NBC has learned there's been a leak at Hanford. Uh, radioactive reading near cracked uh, container of radioactive water. Oh. So, here we go again. And I didn't see much any, anything else. The two suns were kind of cool. And I'm going to do a special shout out, yes I am, to Deanna. Hi Deanna, don't work too hard. Also from Brandy, Brandy, don't work too hard where you're working. Hello, shout out to Brandy and a shout out to Deanna. And let's see what else. Also, uh, a long time ago, a very long time ago, back in 1995, <coughs> this is the crypto news now. But the two sons <coughs> should be the part of the crypto news. Nibiru, you can see it. You can really see it in that photo. You know, it's so much, it's a little bit smaller and off to the left, but man, you can see it doesn't look like a some kind of flare from the camera. It's, it's two suns. So hopefully we'll be able to see that in the United States. And on the, uh, on Dr. Deagle's uh, new traumatical report, when he has the people at the end of it, which is excellent, on a Friday. I was going to play a part of it for you. I still might, but I might do that tomorrow. I don't know. 
But basically what it is, is it, he says, is that because of the Fukushima radiation, the Fukushima radiation, uh, the xenon, and you can see the, uh, you can see the auroras now in certain parts of the world during the day. Uh-oh. And they're worried that it's, you know, there's, I guess, an ozone hole. There's some kind of hole in our ozone layer. And it's like the radiation is, is getting through even more over there. So heads up. Also, let me go back to what I was going to say. I got, I got sidetracked. Back in about 1995, 96, I received this thing. I think it had to do with the Smith. Smithsonian Institute. It was something weird. It's like a science fiction. Well, not really science fiction. It was science fact kind of thing. And I had gotten something in the mail that said, be an interplanetary ambassador. So if people still need uh, interplanetary, if there is a need in this country for someone to talk to anyone who has landed, let me know. I'm up for the job. I can't remember if I sent that off or not, but it said be an interplanetary ambassador. I wouldn't mind doing it since I keep seeing them anyway <laughs> and trying to and film them sometimes. Why not? I'll do it. You got a representative in the UN, a woman in the UN. Why not have one here? Just in case there's like an emergency and someone lands that you don't know, you know, you might need someone to come up and say hello to them. You know, I I'm up for the job. Also, why not? Technically, I guess officially I'm a Martian now because back in uh, 2007, I believe it was, on eBay, I had bought 160 acres of land on Mars on Mariner's Ridge. And when I went back to buy some more, it was gone. And I only bought it, for, I, I bought it for very, it was very cheap, but it was 160 acres and it's registered. So I guess that officially makes me a Martian and people laugh, but guess what? That's a lot of acreage and nobody better land any of their probes and, and whatever else. You're gonna have to, you know, I, I, maybe I'll lease the land out to you. I remember when Florida, was like swamp land. No one wanted to buy land in Florida because it was just swamp land or in the Antelope Valley. It's just desert, nothing there. Well, sooner or later, I'm going to, someone's, they're going to be putting stuff on Mars like there isn't stuff there already. So, yep. I have a, what better person to be an interplanetary ambassador? But so, but, but someone who actually, actually has filmed UFOs has um, had one encounter as a kid and something else. I'll, I'll tell that story too. Might as well. Let's just, just go for broke. Okay. Before there was sightings. This is like 1968, maybe 67. I was, you know, early, you know kind of mid late 60s okay I'm a little kid and I'm I'm looking across the way and my neighbor's house is right there and I'm in Los Angeles Hancock Park of course and uh, I'm looking out my mom is talking to me the school teacher behind me right so there she's talking to me I ain't getting putting on my little nighty and I look out the window and lo and behold, there's like this, I thought it was my neighbor. There's like a real dark figure. Kind of dark, couldn't see anything much. And the best way to describe it was it had an upside down, I called it the upside down bowling pin head. Because it looked like a, the shape of a bowling pin. So I used to bowl, even when I was a little kid. And then you flip it upside down. That's what the head looked like. But I thought it was my friend at first. So I walked over to the window and my mom's behind me. And she goes, stop talking to Sylvia, you know, or whatever. You know, she's telling me 
Are you listening to me? So I walk up to the window real fast and I go, Sylvia! Like that. And and lo and behold, woo! That wasn't Sylvia. Because when I got all the way up to the window, just not more than four feet tall, maybe four and a half feet tall, the, I saw the hands come over the bush and the fingers were this long. This long. Long, dark fingers. <laughs> long, dark fingers. And it went over the bush. With, I called it with no friction. That's the best way to describe it. No friction at all. And what what, what happened was it, it... What happened here? I lost your, the screen. Of course, they probably hung, hung up on me. No. So, no friction at all. It went, whew, like that. See, I can't talk too fast because my voice doesn't match the, the audio doesn't match the video. And that's why I talk a little slow. Okay? But it went, whew, like that. No friction behind it. Went towards us into our yard. And then, then my mom started screaming, oh, call the, you know, call the neighbors. They call, I think they called the police. Not sure. Can't remember. But all the neighbors were turning on the lights. All over there's someone there and I kept trying to tell my mom mom but it had fingers this long and it had like an upside down and I drew it and the whole bit you know it's your classic like alien looking drawing nowadays and about I don't know a year or two later or three maybe a few years later sightings came out <laughs> and I'm watching the TV and you know I go mom there right there remember I told you she goes well Oh, yes, well, maybe something might have landed in Griffith Park. I mean, that's all she had to say. But remember this. If you have a weird encounter, it worked. It's staring straight at me in the window, and all I did, you know, like forcefully, because I thought it was my friend. I was being, you know, trying to be funny, you know. And I just went, Sylvia, like that, you know. Maybe it was because it sounded like it was hissing because I said, Sylvia, whatever it was, it scared the hell out of it and got out of the way fast. Even though it kind of like ran towards our yard and went around in the backyard or wherever it went and moved with no friction. It still, it's, it's, I scared, scared, scared the hell out of it, whatever it was. And no, it wasn't a robber. Robbers don't have fingers this long, and it's like even the head was weird. Still, I can still picture it today. <laughs> Never forgot that. And I think I ended up in someone's uh, UFO book. I told them that story was just weird. People know to come and talk to me. And here I'm doing something else in the mall. Doing a sales job in the mall, and this writer for UFO books just kind of knew to come over and talk to me for some reason. And he put it in his book, but I can't remember his name right off the bat. I'll, I'll bring up his name later. And he was just going to put just my first name or something. But uh, he wanted to put that episode in there. Another another thing that I sent to uh, UFO hunters, I guess, I guess Mr. Burns didn't like that story either. But that's a true story. <laughs> so... <laughs> you could say I have experience and I own land on Mars. So, again, I am available. I am available if you do need someone to be an interplanetary representative for our country. And, uh, sounds silly, but it's true. All those stories I'm telling you is true. They can be backed up by asking other people, you know. <laughs> There are still witnesses to that one when it happened. All right, and uh, I think that's about it for today because there's really not any more uh, news. Oh, um, no, that's about Other than, again, on Dr. Deagle's uh, radio show on Genesis Communication, Nutramedico, they are saying that uh, people have like 17 feet of snow on top of them in, 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 in Europe and if whole villages are buried I mean what about the livestock I'm sure the cows can't they, they were talking about the, how can the cows be unless they're in a barn and the barn hasn't caved in 
from 17 feet of snow on top of the buildings. Alrighty then. Uh, hopefully more news tomorrow. And check out my favorites. I did put a, quite a few favorites up there for you. And if I see anything else that's, you know, good the rest of the Saturday night, I'm, I'll be sure to post it under my favorite. You take care now. This is uh, officially day one. Day one of the weekend. We still got another day to go of the weekend. Take care.